Don't even worry about it. Cause it's saying that the part of enthalpy I can't get my head around is BTUs per pound. It's BTU. I think it's BTUs per pound of dry air, but let's not even think about that. We don't even want to think about anything like that because we're not going to go into anything about how many pounds of air are going through the system. Bring Bergman on to talk about that. We just want to keep it simple so we can understand what we're measuring, where it should be. Hey, Steve says, I can just use measure quick. Hey, that's exactly right. Measure quick takes a lot of this stuff and puts it right there on the screen for you because not a lot of instrumentation measures enthalpy directly. You have to make sure, I think the field piece, I can't remember what that little thing is called, the PRH2, little pin style hygrometer, I think it does enthalpy. And maybe the UEI DTH35, I don't recall for sure, but having something that measures enthalpy is really nice. And if you have one of these apps, sometimes it'll do the calculations for you, but I still think you should know what it is it's doing so you can recognize it even without the app and like a quick check you'll be like oh something's not right here let me get out of my app see dimitri says no less than 20 degrees split hey we're going to talk about that in a minute so we're talking about enthalpy total heat sensible and latent and you're like okay well what's sensible and latent then so we're going to talk about sensible heat just think about that as the the number on the thermostat when you say it's 74 inside now it's 76 that's a change in sensible heat pretty simple pretty easy to understand but what about latent heat well latent heats the heat energy used during the change of state like liquid to gas when things change into different forms of matter now it's starting to sound like science that's latent heat so all that dehumidifying that's what it's basically i think of it as latent load is associated with dehumidification when you're sending air across an evaporator, water's condensing on the evaporator because that air is cooling and no longer can hold the water that it's actually holding when it passes through the evaporator. It condenses, flows down the drain. Dehumidification takes place. The energy it needs to do that is its latent capacity. It's got to use latent capacity to change that uh, air or get the water out of the air. So the more humid your air is, the more capacity it needs in the latent category. So think about that. It's sensible, the number on the thermostat, and then you have latent. You can think of it as maybe the relative humidity number if your thermostat has that. So you have these two heats that you combine to total heat. Now, certain environments, they don't have as much humidity, so you don't require as much latent capacity. And the temperature split swings based on how much capacity you need. So if we go to latent and sensible split, it's going to be the amount of AC capacity that it takes to address each load type. And typically there's a split. If you're in a really dry environment, you might be 90% sensible, 10% latent, and it could drop down lower and lower based on how much humidity is in the air. When I used to go down to the beach, as I digress, I used to go down to the beach to start up these units that I had installed. They get the power to them because North Carolina, you can't wire your own units unless you have a special license. And even if you have the special license, I hate it. That's why I'm doing air quotes. Even if you have your special license, you can't change breakers and stuff, which to me is stupid. But government is in general rather stupid. Uh, that's why we're not using that R22 anymore that we love so much. But when I go down to the beach, it's extremely humid in the houses. You, you're talking about 80% relative humidity sometimes because they've been sitting there no air conditioning for several days or ever, depending on if it's a new build or not. And you start that thing up, there's just a tremendous amount of latent load. Now, when you start up a system that has a relative humidity coming in the return of 80%, what do you guys think happens? What, what happens to the temperature split? You tell me, temperature split shrinks down. Because remember, your temperature split is basically like saying the number on the thermostat, it's sensible. The bigger it is, the lower the latent load is. If you have a high latent load, that temperature split's coming down because you're not going to be able to do as much sensible cooling as you would if there was a low relative humidity. Mm -hmm. 